In this video, I'm going to give you an intro to linearization or curve straightening. We linearize data so we can easily fit a line to the data and use that equation to make predictions. A linear set of data is easier to work with than a curved set of data. First, we're going to practice writing physics equations from some data that is already linearized. So what do we need to do to linearize a graph that is curved? This first one is an inverse relationship. So we are going to graph the y, so the same data that we have on the y-axis, and then the x data, so all the data points down here, we're instead going to graph 1 over x. So we're going to do 1 divided by every single um, x. So we're going to take the inverse of every data point on the x-axis, and then we're going to re-graph it with the y data on the y-axis, same as before, and 1 over x data on the horizontal axis. The next one's a quadratic. We're going to do something somewhat similar, but we're going to do y versus x squared. So we're going to square all the x data. And the last one, we're going to square all the y data. And then we're going to leave the x um, as it was. Another option for this last one is to leave the y as it was, and we could take the square root of all the x data. That would also work for this square root graph. Once we linearize a graph, it's not still y equals mx plus b. No, you can't use your original y physics variable and your original x physics variable. So this first one, if we graphed y and x, which is normal, we get y equals mx plus b. And remember, y stands for some physics variable that's going to be on your vertical axis, and x stands for some physics variable that's going to be on your horizontal axis. But now if we change it and we're graphing y versus 1 over x, we can use y equals m times 1 over x, because this is the variable on our horizontal axis. So whatever's on our horizontal axis needs to go in the x position in y equals mx plus b. And you'll see a pattern here where we're replacing whatever we changed with the new variable. So we would put the, the new physics variable, um, the, whether it's squared or square root or whatever it is, in the spot in the equation. If we graph something y squared versus x, and then we just write y equals mx plus b, that is not the right equation that matches the graph because the graph has a y squared on it. Students mess this up way too much, so you've got to be careful about that. All right, so this page should be somewhere in your packet. It may be in a reference packet or it may be in your main packet, but you should find that before continuing. The idea here is we aren't going to do the steps in linearization, the actual squaring or square rooting or inversing, but we want to show you the ideas, what you would do, and then how you would write the physics equation. So the initial relationship is quadratic. So what needs to be done to linearize a quadratic curve? You're going to square the horizontal variable. In this case, it's time. So we're going to go over here, and this it's going to turn out to be a straight line. We still have velocity on our y-axis. And on the x-axis, we no longer have time. We have time squared. You have to write time squared. And you have to have the unit squared as well. That's super important. By the way, these relationships are just made up, so there's, we're not getting into any physics behind this. The units of our y-intercept are the same as before, meters per second. And the units of our slope are the units of the y, meters per second, divided by the units on the x-axis, seconds squared. So if you look, do your fraction algebra, that's meters per second cubed. So our physics equation is going to be the y variable is equal to the slope times the x variable plus the y-intercept. So y variable velocity is equal to the slope, including units, times the x variable, which is time squared, plus the y-intercept, which is negative 3 meters per second. So there's the first example. Next example, this is a square root relationship, so we need to square the velocity. You will need to know what to do with that. So there's three different options, and you need to know those. You won't be given the reference packet for quizzes and tests. When we square the velocity, which is on the y-axis, we now have velocity squared, and those units are squared as well. So v squared, and it's meters squared over seconds squared. The x-axis does not change time in seconds. The slope is meters squared over seconds squared over seconds. And oh, there's the units for the y-intercept. And if you do our fraction algebra, you get this. So the linearized physics equation, pause the video, write your linearized physics, physics equation, and then come back and check your work. Y variable, 
slope with units, x variable, y-intercept with units. We'll do one more. All right, pause the video, do all of this, and then come back and check your work. It's an inverse relationship. We need to graph 1 over the variable on the x-axis, which is time. We're going to have velocity still on the y-axis because we don't change that. The x-axis is now 1 over time. Now double check. Make sure you actually did that. 1 over time and 1 over seconds. If it's not both 1 over time and 1 over seconds, it's not correct. The y-intercept units, meters per second. Now the slope is meters per second over 1 over seconds. You do your fraction algebra. It comes out to meters. And the linearized phase physics equation, y-axis variable, slope with units, x-axis variable, 1 over time, plus 2 meters per second, the y-intercept. This physics equation now works just like any other. You put in the time, it gives you the velocity at that time. You put in the velocity, it gives you the time at that velocity. This is all just made up numbers and data, so this doesn't actually help us predict anything, but that's the idea behind it. All right, that's how you linearize data.